Hi, this is Amaya from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll understand a simple numerical example on how to price an option using the binomial option pricing model. Now, as we know, the binomial model is a popular discrete time model for option pricing. So to understand this model, we'll take a two-step binomial tree. We'll assume the underlying is a stock. So we have been given a certain set of parameters which are relevant for this example. We'll use this to walk through the entire numerical example. The stock price is currently trading at 50. The strike price is taken as 52. The time to maturity is two years. The risk free rate is 5%. The size of the up move is 1.2. Size of the down move is 0.8. The time step which we assume is one year. So we are going to split this two year tenor into two parts, one year each. And this is a European put option. So our aim as a part of this exercise is to understand what is the option price VA. So VA is the option price as of today. So if I were to answer the question that what is the fair value of the option or more popularly, what is the MTM of the option as of today? VA will help me understand that. So my target is to understand VA and how do I approach towards this calculation. So as step one, let's try to populate the stock prices at each of these nodes. So we have been given that S0 is 50. So we have the price at node A, which is 50, because we know that this is today. Now we can use the size of up and down moves in order to plot the spot, the stock prices at each of these nodes. So let's begin. So it's simple multiplication. I look at what is the size of the up move and I multiply it by uh, the spot price in order to arrive at all of the nodal prices in the upward direction. So when I say an upward direction, if you see there are two ways in which uh, I can move from one node. Because it's a binomial tree, we can either go in the upward direction or we can go in the downward direction. So every time we are moving in the upward direction, we need to take into consideration the size, the U or the factor of 1.2 in order to derive the spot prices at each nodes. So let's begin. So let's say we have SB. Now it's 1.2 into 50. So this is 60. Next, I need to understand what is SD or the stock price at D. Again, I take 60 and I multiply it by the upward movement factor 1.2 so 1.2 into 60 which makes it 72 now let's look at the nodes c and f then we'll worry about node e now again starting from node a node c is in the downward direction now whenever i have to move in the downward direction the size of the downward move is 0.8 so that factor has to be used so 50 into 0.8 which gives me the value SC, which is the spot stock price at node C, which is 40. Simple multiplication. And now in order to move from C to F, if I need to figure out what is the stock, stock price at F, this will be 40 into 0 0.8, which is 32 units. Now only node E remains. So there are two ways in which you can approach node E. Either we take the upward factor and use the stock price at node C and then arrive at E or I use the stock price at node B and I use the downward factor and I reach node E. So either, either of these approaches is going to lead us to the exact same value. So our value SE, this is 48. So this was step one in the calculation. We have been able to successfully calculate what are the nodal stock prices at each of these nodes in the binomial tree. Now, as a step two, I have to calculate certain probabilities. Now, why probabilities are required? Because whenever we are pricing options, we are studying something in a probability probabilistic framework. 
So for a binomial model, we know that there are just two states which can happen in the next point in time. That is standing today. I can either move in the upward direction or I can move in the downward direction. So there are just two states of the world. So we would like to assign the probabilities of up move and the probability of down move. Naturally, these are going to sum to one because these are the only two possible states which, which we can take standing today. So we'll use a couple of formulas now. Now, one formula is the calculation of probability. So let me write that simple formula here. So probability of an up move, P, this is given by E raised to RT minus D upon U minus D. where u and d is the same factor which has been which we have used earlier the size of the up move and the size of the down move and this is just the exponent factor and we have to plug in r and t so if i plug in the numbers and solve this will be e raised to five percent into time step one year minus d upon u minus d so if you simply solve this we get a value close to 0 0.62, 0 0.628, 0 0.63. So this becomes the probability of the up move. Now probability of down move is nothing but a plain subtraction. So I just need to do a 1 minus P. So in order to calculate the probability of down move, if I call it as Q, this will be equal to 1 minus P, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.62, which is roughly 0 0.38. So this is the probability of up move P and Q, which is equal to 1 minus P, is the probability of down move. So these two probabilities are going to sum to 1 because, as I mentioned earlier, there are only two states of the world because we are assuming a binomial distribution. Now, up till now, we haven't really sp uh, spoken about how exactly we tell the model that this is a put option which has to be priced. No mention of that has been done up till now. It has only been mentioned to us that this is the option which has to be solved. But up till now, that was not required. So now could be a good time to communicate to the model that it has to solve for a put option. So the way in which we can communicate this to the model is through the put payoff condition. So we have the condition for put payoff as everyone recollects. We have put which is given as max of k minus s or 0. So we can use this payoff condition and apply it at the terminal nodes. So this is like a backward induction scheme. We start from our terminal nodes which are d, e and f respectively and then we keep on stepping back in time. Because our final target is to reach VA, which is the value of the option at A. So let's apply the payoff condition for a put option, which we have mentioned here, at nodes D, E, and F. So by plugging in numbers and using these values of SD, SE, and SF, I can say PD, which is the put price at node D, which will be max of 52 minus 72 or 0. Now this has to be a 0 because it is max of a negative number or 0. Next, if I want to calculate PE using the same approach, so I do a max of 52 minus 48 or 0, so that is 4 units. And then I do a PF, which is the put payoff for node F, which is 52 minus 32 or 0, which is equal to 20 units. Now we know the put, put option prices at these terminal nodes. Now we need to step back in time. Now we cannot apply the payoff condition once again because remember that we are working on a European put option and we know that European options can be exercised only at expiry. And all of these are intermediate time points. So node B and node C, these are intermediate time points. This is not my time points at expiry because these D, E and F are my expiry nodes. So my payoff condition cannot be applied again at D and C. I need to do something else. So here I borrow the formulas which we derived 
when we analyze the risk neutral framework for binomial option pricing. And we are going to use those formulas to step from these terminal nodes to B and C. So what we can do is we can split this into two parts. Let's draw these two triangles and we'll analyze them separately. So we have a triangle in blue and we'll have another triangle in maybe purple. So a triangle in blue and a triangle in purple. So if you see triangle in blue is capturing points B, D and E. And triangle in purple is capturing points C, E and F. Now let's focus on the upper triangle. Now D, E and F. Why I say that this is one triangle and we can treat it separately? Because for node B, we just have two nodes which are feeding it, which is D and E respectively. So if we have the data at node D and E, which we already have because we have applied the put payoff condition, we can step back and arrive at what should be the value of the option at B. That is, I can successfully calculate what is PB. Likewise, if I focus on the lower triangle, we have C, E and F which have been grouped together. Now, uh, we have done that because E and F are the only nodes which are feeding it to C. So by using the data available at E and F, we can easily calculate P, C, which is the put price at C. Now to step back from these terminal nodes to one step prior, which is on the cross section of B and C, there is a formulation which we borrow from the risk neutral idea. So this was, these were the first two formulas which we used. We are used one more to do the stepping back. So let's say we have an option price F at a certain node. This will be given by a plain discount factor E raised to minus RT. Here we take the step size into probability of the up move into the value at the upper node plus 1 minus P into value of the option at the lower node. So it is this formula which we will have to use recursively in order to step back in time. So we can use this to arrive at PB, PC. And finally, at VA, which is our, uh, which is our final target. So let's start to use these formulas now because we have the required information with us. So beginning with VB, or we can call it as PB. We have to just plug in values here. So it will be E raised to minus RT, five percent into one, into probability of up move which we have calculated as 0.62 into FU which is at the upper node. Now upper node we know that the value is 0 because PD is 0. So into 0 plus 1 minus P which is 0 0.38 into FD. So FD is the lower node which is node E which is feeding into P. So here we have a value of 4 which can be plugged in. So if we solve this simple equation, we get the value at B equal to 1.414. So I need to simply open up the brackets and apply this discount factor. Similarly, I can do the same operation for node C as well. Now, now remember for node C, I need to focus on nodes E and F because E and F are the nodes which are feeding into C. I don't need to worry about node D anymore because node D is not really connected with node C here. So applying the similar relationship like we did for node B, E raised to minus R into probability of up move into the value at the upper node. So now the upper node is at 4 because E is the upper node from point of reference C. So P is 4. So this will be 4 plus 1 minus P which is probability of down move into the lower node is F, so the price is 20. So 20 is feeding into C, so this can be plugged in as 20. And if we just solve these brackets and multiply it by the discount factor, we get a value close to 9.46. Now we have the data at B and C as well. So PB and PC is available with us. 
Now I can use this data in order to step back. So now I have the one final triangle which I can show by yellow. So this yellow color triangle is capturing A, B and C nodes. And now B and C are the only nodes which are feeding into A. Now since we have the value of the option at B and C, we can easily step back using the same formula. So applying the same logic as earlier, we can have P A or here we have called it as B A. So might as well call it as B A so that we can maintain consistency with what we have given the nomenclature as. So V A, which is the value at node A, again using the same formula as earlier. First comes my discount factor into the probability of up move into the value at B, which is 1.414 plus probability of down move into the value at the lower node, which was value at node C, which was 9.46. So if we solve these brackets, we get a value close to 4.20. Therefore, VA, i.e. MTM of the option is equal to 4.2 units. So 4.2 units is the value of the option standing today. So this is also what we call as the MTM or the mark to market of the option standing today. Now we have studied this for a European put. Now a similar process can be followed for a European call. Now only one small change has to be made if this has to be applied for a call option. And the only change which you have to do is to change the payoff condition. So recollect that the payoff condition was applied at nodes D, E and F. We did not talk of payoff conditions anywhere else. It was only these terminal nodes where payoff was applied. So if we have to price a European call option, the only thing which changes will be my payoff condition. So my new payoff condition will be C equal to max of S minus K or zero, which we know is the payoff condition for a call option. Otherwise, the overall approach remains the same. So that way, once we develop a model for binomial, so imagine that you are building a model in Python or maybe even a VBA. That same model can be used for handling both call as well as put European options. We can just have a simple if condition which can bifurcate uh, the payoff, but otherwise the overall approach remains the same. So this is how we can price an option using the binomial option pricing model. As a part of our certificate course on quantitative risk management, we dig deeper into understanding binomial option pricing. So we dig deeper into ideas of risk neutral valuation, no arbitrage and delta hedging, and we try to relate them together so that we have a better understanding of things. Similarly, binomial option pricing also gets covered in FRM part one examination. So a very important module when one has to study option pricing. To know more about our courses, please visit our website www.finquestinstitute.com. Also, feel free to put your comments in the comment section below. Thank you.